it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time for another weekly reading vlog. Hey guys, so it's the second week of May and it's time for me to do another reading vlog. So for this week, these are the books that I have planned. So I am going to continue Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. Now at this point I only have like two days left on my library loan so I'm most likely not going to finish it considering I'm only at 18%. Um, but I am going to try to read a little bit more to get through it and then um, probably either renew it or wait for my physical copy to come in to continue reading it. So I am going to be reading it a little bit the first half of the week but most likely not continuing it. And then second, I'm going to be starting my next audiobook, which is another YA contemporary. I've been reading a lot of YA contemporary recently, um, but it's either been hit or miss. I've either been really, really enjoying it or it's just not my thing and I want to DNF it. Um, it's one or the other. And so next up, I have Furia by um, Yamil Said Mendez. Um, so this one I'm really excited to get started with. I've heard a lot of good things about this book. Um, what I'm most excited about for this book is that the premise is that it's set in Argentina. Um, usually majority of the books I read that are contemporary are set in the United States and so I don't often get to read a contemporary book in a setting that's non-American. Um, so I'm really excited to get started with this book. Our main protagonist is a very popular and very talented soccer player. However, she is keeping her I like soccer identity a secret from her family because they will disapprove of it. And she's trying to get a scholarship to go to a United States University um, in order to become a professional soccer player. And at the same time, some romantic stuff starts to get into play when her ex-boyfriend comes back into town. So I'm really excited to get started with this book. It's going to be my audiobook read for the week when I go to and from work. And then on top of that, the third book that I'm hoping to get started with this week is The Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang. Um, so this one is an adult Asian inspired fantasy novella and it's the first twin novella from the, oh I forgot the name of the series. It's like Tenasorte series? Oh, I completely forgot the name. Um, but I'm really excited to get to this book. I've been meaning to get to this book for months and now I finally have it available from my local library. So I'm really excited to get to this book. It, it's going to be read as an ebook. Um, so it's going to be a very quick and short, easy read. So probably as soon as I have to return Elantris, I will get started on this book. So hopefully I will have read two and a half books this week that I can talk to you guys about. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a lot planned for this week. Um, in terms of like extra content wise, it's going to be a pretty chill week of just me going to work and living my day to day life and reading and watching more Korean variety shows because I'm back on that kick. <laughs> so yeah, uh, stay tuned for some more reading updates. Hey guys, it's here for another reading update. So I finished Furia by Shamile uh, Saeed Mendez. Um, so this book I finished in two days. I was really, really enjoying it. So much so that I didn't even have enough time to really update you guys on it. Um, but this book was so good. It's a five stars. Like it is a really, really powerful YA contemporary book. And I understand why it got the Reese Witherspoon's YA book pick. And I will be surprised if this book does not receive more awards in the future because it was that good. Um, so to kind of backtrack here, um, Furia is following our main protagonist who wants to be a professional soccer player, but she has to keep that part of her identity a secret from her family and her community because she lives in Argentina and majority of the time women do not really play soccer um, except when they're like little kids for fun, but no one does it professionally. It's still considered a man's sport. and. Um, our protagonist is following kind of the, I guess you say, the family legacy because her father was a famous soccer player and he was like 
he about ready to go pro when he had this accident with his leg and he could no longer play. And then her older brother, Pablo, is actually a pro soccer player and he um, is able to start his career in doing what he loves but yet our protagonist doesn't have that same ability to do so and she's just expected to like get a good job and provide in other ways for her family. And so she's getting a lot of like push and pull from different directions because um, on one hand, some parts of society is telling her, oh, just find like a good husband and settle down. And then her mother is really pressuring her to go to medical school, go to university because no one in the family has gone to university. And her mother really wants her to have other opportunities available to her and um, is really terrified of her getting a boyfriend and getting pregnant and dropping out of high school um, because she's in her senior year of high school. And then she really wants to go to a university um, outside of Argentina, either in the United States or Canada, and be part of a pro um, female soccer league. So there's a lot of different kind of motivators for why she's doing what she's doing and why she's keeping everything a secret from her family. Um, but at the same time, this is not only a why contemporary story about a teenage girl trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life and having secrets from her family but it's also set in this amazing backdrop of being in Argentina during this time when there's the beginning of a feminist movement and she feels herself kind of swept up in this because so on one hand she doesn't want to draw any extra attention to herself but on the other hand she is definitely seeing the implications of being a female in Argentina considering on a daily basis girls are disappearing and getting murdered due to violence from men and so she's kind of also having that in the background and the reader is also having that information in the background and it's also deeply affecting the decisions that our main protagonist is making. And then at the same time, as an extra added layer of complication, her first love comes back into town, Diego, and he's this famous soccer player who not only went pro but he went international and he's just like a celebrity. And they had kind of like a they kind of liked each other and kind of started to admit their feelings to each other in the past, but then he got recruited and had to leave the next day. And so they never really got to talk or address their feelings towards each other. And now they're going into that. So this book was definitely had multiple layers of complications. I really felt for our protagonist. She was so wonderful to follow. She's just this brave, strong-headed, independent girl who is not trying to do what society is telling her to do. She's trying to be independent and live her life and also learn not to give up choices just for a boy. And it was just so great to follow her story. It just felt very powerful and moving and liberating and emotional. And I will also have to say that this book does contain multiple trigger warnings. Um, there is trigger warnings for um, physical emotional abuse and um, as well as some animal abuse and some on-screen or on-print domestic violence. Um, so if any of that um, would be considered harmful to your mental health, I would recommend um, like precautions for the story, but if you feel that you can handle it, um, just know that it's there, but I feel like it was very powerful for the story, so I nonetheless recommend this book. But you know, trigger warnings as usual. So um, one of the things that I was worried about with reading this book as an audiobook was that I knew there was going to be a lot of Spanish in this book, but it was going to be Argentinian Spanish, which for me feels like a completely different <laughs> language than Spanish, because um, I really can't understand Argentinian accent at all. Um, but luckily it was not super strong in the audiobook and I could actually understand some of it. Um, there were, of course, obviously some vocabulary terms that are specifically Argentinian words that I didn't understand, but based on context clues I was able to. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad by any means. Oh, and one more thing I really, really enjoyed was that our main protagonist was, um, had Palestinian backgrounds and so she was Palestinian and Argentinian. Her last name was Hassan and I really kind of liked that they kind of threw that in instead of her just being 
fully Argentinian, that she was also um, biracial, mixed identity, as well as her best friend in the story is a Chinese um, Argentinian. And so I kind of like that we still had that level of diversity even in our characters there. Um, and then the author herself, because I looked up the author, and she also is Argentinian American, and she has Palestinian um, roots in her family, and even her name is Palestinian. It's Arabic. And so I really liked that it was definitely own voices, that the author really took her identity and brought it to life with this new character um, that was just done so well. And um, so as you guys can tell by me gushing about this book, I really, really enjoyed it and highly, highly recommend it. So, so far I've been reading amazing Hawaii contemporary books as of late, so really, really enjoying that. But I think for the next books that I pick up, I'm going to switch over back to fantasy, definitely adult fantasy because I have a lot of it on my TBR this month. So I'm going to move on to adult fantasy. Um, but yeah. I've been really enjoying the books that I've been reading this month. It's been so far amazing. Hey guys, it's me. So today I'm actually dressed up pretty nice. I'm wearing a full length jumpsuit romper and I have like my full face of makeup on. And the reason why is because um, last weekend was Mother's Day, but unfortunately I was not able to go out anywhere with my mom. Um, because I had the second vaccine shot and that one pretty much left me in bed for two days straight. So I wasn't able to do anything to celebrate with her and so this weekend I'm taking her out for lunch and um, yeah, so I am dressed up today, which is really weird because I don't dress up anymore <laughs> due to, you know, the whole world stopping thing. But yeah, so I figured I would give a quick reading update before I headed out today. So last time that I checked in with you guys, I had just finished Furia, and so I decided to pick up The Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang. This is the first book in a series of novellas. It's, I think, a quartet. It's called the Tenserat series, and um, the first two books in the series are um, twin novellas, and the reason why is because they both span the same 40-year time period, and they are both following this set of twins. Um, the first book is really focusing on one of the twins and the other one is focusing on the other twin because at some point in their life they diverge and have separate life paths. And so the purpose of it is that it's telling like the same time period involving the same characters, but we're just following different point of views with the books. Hi, um, so my memory card was full and so it completely cut off what I was saying. So I have to just kind of jump back now and think about what was the last thing I said before it cut me off. And um, so I was talking about the summary for The Black Tides of Heaven and it's basically following this deal that was made where this protector for this country and she's essentially kind of like an evil dictator. Um, she makes a deal with this monastery for their assistance. Um, because there are magical people that train at this monastery and um, in return she would give them one of um, her children. And so she decides to kind of do a loophole with this deal and instead of giving her youngest child, which was the prediction that everybody had, um, she decides to get pregnant and then give up that baby um, as the deal. And um, so <laughs> things kind of go for an extra loop because she ends up having twins. And so these twins are given up to the monastery as part of her deal. And so we're following Akeha and Mokoya that are the twins. And what's really interesting about this book and about this world that Neon Yang created is that Neon Yang themselves they are non-binary and so they go by they them pronouns and they really made sure to create a world in this fantasy book that gender is really fluid um, and is expressed and is really much a choice. Um, so in this world everyone is born genderless and um, their anatomy in fact is a reflection of kind of in between they don't really have the anatomy of female or male 
but then once they have confirmed their gender and they have chosen, then there is this magical ceremony in which they receive the anatomy for the gender that they chose. They also have the option of being um, not claiming a gender their whole life and, um, and just being non-binary. Um, and then what's really cool is that you can essentially choose at any point in your life when you can claim your gender. So you can be three and claim your gender or you can be 70 and claim your gender. It is up to you. Um, so I thought that was really great and such a really interesting concept to put into a fantasy book. Um, and so the twins, they are raised um, genderless and they had decided um, when they were very little that they wanted to grow up together, stay together forever, and just never claim a gender. And then things start to get a little bit um, tricky for the twins because both of them decide to claim genders around the same time when they are 17 and they are opposite genders. Um, so we're following these twins and the first book is really following Akeha's point of view. Um, Makoya decides to stay at the monastery. Akeha at one point decides to leave and they end up joining a, joining a rebellion group. For Black Tides of Heaven, I decided to give this one a 4.5. I really didn't have any complaints with this book. As a novella, it was around 220 pages and it's really interesting because we're following 40 years of their life and so by the end of the first book, Akeha and Makoya are around 40 and the second book picks up where we left off and so it's the continuation of their life. Um, so I found that interesting how we're basically jumping through time because at one point they're six, the next chapter they're nine, and the next chapter they're 17 and so forth. And so we're really only seeing kind of like snippets of their life, what's important during that time. And um, I did really enjoy kind of just like that quick jump through their lifetime instead of kind of getting down with the nitty gritty. But at the same time, it did really limit the world development. It really limited a little bit of the character development because we're only seeing critical moments of their life versus actual development on page. Um, so that was definitely like an interesting choice for the author to take. I still liked it and so I think that they did a good job with it. Um, I think after reading the second book, I might see whether I still like it or not because honestly since we're following both characters I think it would have been kind of cool if we went back and forth between their perspectives as well as have it all put together in one novel instead of a novella but um, let me see if I still have that opinion after I read the second one. So the first one I read as an ebook and I finished it in one day and I have the second one here as a physical copy that I got from my secondhand bookstore. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm going to get to this book next because I just really want to jump right into it. Um, I don't own the third and fourth book and so I'm going to have to get them from my library and read them at some point. I don't know about this month, um, but maybe at some point in the nearby future for another TBR you'll see the series on there. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Um, we're going to follow Makoya's perspective in the second book and we're following the twins from when they are 40 and onward. And at the end of the first book, um, Makoya definitely goes through a lot and is dealing with a lot of trauma and grief, um, going into the second book. And that's really changing their personality and how they view the world. So I'm really excited to get their perspective for this one. Um, yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be really good. Um, maybe another 4.5, maybe more. And also the other book that I mentioned at the beginning of this week's reading vlog was Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. And um, my library alone already finished with that book, so I didn't really get around to reading any more of it um, thus far. But I did order this book physically and it came. So um, this is the UK cover for um, Elantris. Now this says that it's the 10th year anniversary edition. So I know that means that it has like some bonus content at the end. And also this is the version that has been edited um, by Brandon Sanderson, you know, 10 years after the fact. Um, but the one thing that I'm a little confused about is that this has like the green cover and I've seen the same UK cover with orange instead of green. So I'm wondering if the green is new, if this is like the 10th year anniversary edition they changed the color scheme of the cover, 
or if there's like two different versions of the UK or like which one came first, the orange or the green one? Because I've only ever seen the green color and then when I was looking to purchase it, I kept seeing the orange color pop up as well. So if anybody knows, please leave it in the comment down below because I have tried Googling it online and I can't find anything that clearly states why there's two different colors for the covers. So yeah, but I'm glad I got the green one because I really like the green one a lot. So as you guys can see, I put my bookmark at the spot where I'm at. I'm still only about 20% through the book. Um, this version like is different from my ebook because this one says I only have 550 pages instead of 650. Um, so I guess it's less for me to read. But if you guys see this, this print is tiny, tiny, tiny print. So um, yeah, and of course I still have to use all of my brain cells to read this book. So it definitely still is going to take me a while to get through this one. Um, I'll probably read a little bit more over the weekend, but I don't think I'm going to finish it. Maybe I'll get through half of it. That should be my goal, get through 50% of this book. Um, and this book is definitely going to get carried on for another week. Um, but hopefully next week is my last week because I really don't have any more time to spend on chunky adult fantasy books. Gonna read some more of this. Probably not gonna finish it this weekend, but yeah. So I will probably update you guys one more time after I have finished Red Threads of Fortune and any other books that I pick up this weekend. I just finished um, The Red Threads of Fortune by Neon Yang, which is the second book in the Tenserat Quartet novella series, and I have thoughts. So first off, I want to say that I am going to give this one a 4.5, just like the first book in the series. Um, I was not expecting <laughs> the formatting of this book. Um, if you guys recall, The Black Tides of Heaven was basically a span of almost 40 years, like 35 years, and um, this book took place over three days. <laughs> so we went from a book that was trying to tell all of the key events for 35 years for two characters, and then this book following only one POV and her dealing with grief for a span of three days as a bunch of events happen in this book. Um, so yeah, the formatting of this series so far is interesting to say the least. I'm not disliking it, but it's also very kind of confusing. Um, it's not, I guess, you know, your typical story format, which, hey, it could be considered a good thing, the fact that this is very unpredictable. I really don't know where this series is going or whose POV we're going to follow for the third and fourth book. You know, how much time is going to pass if we're even going to see the characters from the first two books no idea. Um, I will say that I did really enjoy this book. Um, granted, it was over a span of three days, and so we really got a lot more character development for Makoya, who's the twin that we follow in this book, along with her grief of losing a loved one in the first book. I'm not going to say who because it's a spoiler. And um, yeah, it takes four pl it takes place four years after the event of her loved one who had passed away and so she has run away and she is hunting dragons pretty much um, and so it's really nice following her story of grief and sorrow and how she deals with it and there are some other characters that weave in for some more like romantic subplots which I really enjoyed in this book. Um, I will say that Makoya is kind of a little difficult in this book as a character because she's lashing out at everybody due to her grief and so she is kind of, you know, acting poorly with a lot of characters that we have come to love from the first book. So that is a little bit difficult to read because I love Tenjay. He is my favorite character so far in the series and Tenjay goes through so much shit in the first two books so far. So. Hoping he gets some more happier stuff in the third and fourth book for the series. So, like I mentioned, I am planning on reading the third and fourth book in the series. I don't know when, I don't own either of them, so I'm either going to have to get them or rent them from the library, but really excited to continue with the series. Um, so, so far I've read Furia, which is the Y contemporary, which I gave five stars, and then Black Tides of Heaven and Red Threads of Fortune. Both of them I gave 4.5 stars. So, so far my reading this week has been stellar. 
Um, I'm going to continue reading Elantris today, but I probably won't give you guys any more reading updates on Elantris until next week's reading vlog, so I am going to end it here. Um, so if you guys have liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys have read any of these books and what were your thoughts on them. And subscribe for some more bookish content. I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the Nook Realm. Bye!